Second oral question, Baroness Morgan of Drefflin. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing on the order paper in my name. This Government is committed to ending rough sleeping by the end of this Parliament, and the long-term plan set a target of 20 high-need areas to receive new specialist mental health provision for people sleeping rough by 2023-24. In fact, the NHS has exceeded that target with 23 sites. Now, there are plans to share learning from these sites to identify the key successes and effective approaches, and NHS England plans to undertake a formal evaluation before the end of the programme. Can I thank the Minister for that uh, answer, and also I will look forward very much to the publication of that work. We know um, that uh, common mental health um, conditions are twice as high uh, amongst people who have experienced homelessness, and psychosis is 15 times as high. Um, so obviously I, I really do commend the Government's commitment to end rough sleeping. Does the Minister know um, of, of the number that has been settled on for the number of rough pe uh, uh, people sleeping rough with uh, needs for specialist mental health services? And if there has been a number settled on, um, is that the, the criteria that will be used to review progress with the NHS long-term plan when that's refreshed? Well, can I start by thanking the uh, noble Baroness of uh, Dufellin for the question, but also continued uh, conversations uh, with me on a number of different health-related issues. I am indeed learning quite a lot from, from those conversations. Um, in terms of the data available, I understand that uh, the data will be collected at some point, and hopefully it will be on a regular basis. Um, if no Baroness will allow me, I will write to her with more details, but I do know the top-level answer to that question is that we are, uh, we are about to collect the data. Homeless. Cite alcohol misuse is one of the reasons that first made them homeless. And about one in ten people who die while homeless, um, alcohol is actually the, the, the main uh, cause of death. So, could the noble Lord the Minister assure us that all of this work will have in included in it a proper alcohol treatment uh, programme so that the underlying problems are dealt with in addition to the other mental health problems? Well, the noble Baroness makes a very important point about the fact that there are a number of people uh, who are homeless, who are, uh, have, su have suffered from sort of being alcoholics or alcohol abuse, as well as drug abuse as well. And the point is that when you look at a number of these people uh, 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 who are suffering from these issues, they are quite often uh, in interrelated. And therefore, in the joined up thinking that we're looking at, uh, a number of the charities, civil society organisations and the NHS are making sure that we treat the various symptoms, but also make sure it's done in an integrated way. Given, I'm grateful to the noble lady. My lords, given the success of the Everyone In campaign, when 15,000 rough sleepers were given accommodation uh, to protect them from COVID, does my noble friend agree that that progress be, must be maintained? And given that many rough sleepers do have mental health issues, can my noble friend say whether the specialist funding for mental health services for rough sleepers will be extended beyond the next two years? Well, I thank my noble friend for raising that important point. And, and the issue is that, uh, or the solution, is that the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities' new rough sleeping strategy will set out how departments will work together to end rough sleeping, build, as the noble, my noble friend rightly says, building on the recent success to ensure rough sleeping is prevented in the first instance, and also to respond where it does occur. We are going to work closely with the Department of Leveling Up Housing and Communities, as well as other departments, as well as the sort of voluntary and social uh, uh, the, the, the voluntary and a social enterprise sector and others to make sure that we are all joined up. My Lords, the most common health problems amongst homeless people are substance abuse, as, as the Minister uh, just mentioned, and mental health problems, and often a combination of the two. Given this correlation, <coughs> could the Minister say what the Government is doing to reconnect addi um, addiction services with health services in order to treat uh, homeless people with multiple health problems? Um, and does the Minister agree with me that specialist addiction services should be jointly commissioned by the NHS and local authorities to ensure full integration? Well, I, I, like many other noble lords, uh, the noble Baroness has raised a, a very important point and a very important aspect of this issue. And the noble Baroness is absolutely right that people with drug addiction 
often have physical mental health needs as well. And mental health problems and trauma are often central to an individual's dependency on drugs, alcohol, or other, abu other, um, uh, other abuses. Now, as set out in the drug strategy, we are working with NHS England to ensure that there is joined up service provision between specialist mental health services and substance misuse services for people with co occurring issues, including those uh, with rough, who are experiencing rough sleeping. Um, we're also going to ensure that the next phase of the integrated care system development includes leadership on drugs and alcohol to integrate both physical and mental health care and substance misuse services. Lords, and now a guaranteed virtual contribution from Lord Howarth of Newport. <laughs> my Lords, my Lords, may I commend to the Minister's attention, if he's not already aware of it, the work of Arts and Homelessness International and its 500 or so member organisations. In working with the NHS and local authorities on ways to support people sleeping rough, will ministers take into account the impressive evidence that enabling them to engage with creative and cultural programmes, I think of choir with no name, streetwise opera, museum of homelessness, and the work of the Booth Centre, leads to improved well-being, resilience, agency, and skills, and thus to improve prospects for sustaining tenancies and employment. Well, I'm sure we're all grateful that Noble Lord was able to ask his question uh, on, on this issue. And particularly, can I pay tribute to Noble Lord for all the work and the awareness he raises of the creative sector across a whole uh, range of health and social care issues. Um, I am not aware of the uh, projects to which the Noble Lord refers, so I would be happy for the Noble Lord to write to me about this. Um, but before, um, when I, in a previous political career, when I was a member of the European Parliament for London, I would meet with lots of civil society organisations right across London, including homeless projects. And and it was amazing the diversity of uh, provision. It wasn't, it wasn't just a simple thing, it was a number of different issues that they were tackling, because quite often the needs of homeless people are quite complex, and it's not just one uh, simple solution to solving the issue. My Lord, my noble friend will know that those, with, uh, that those people that are sleeping rough after a year generally are the ones that started off having mental health problems. So can my noble friend say what um, preventative action the government is taking to prevent people um, hitting the streets in the first place, very much having a very uh, coordinated approach with the housing sector as well? I think my noble uh, friend ra raises a very important issue about how we prevent it. But when you look at the causes of homelessness, quite often it's complex. In fact, it might be starting to uh, think about this, but all of us, are what, all know, uh, including no lords perhaps, are only one or two steps away from homelessness. Either uh, someone loses their job, or they lose their, their relationship breaks up, they lose their home, uh, or the other way around, they lose their, their relationship breaks up and they lose their job, and then uh, after a while of uh, friends' goodwill, they stop sleeping on friends' sofas and they end up homeless. So it's really important that we understand all those different steps on how people become uh, homeless and we tackle not just make sure that they get into accommodation but also tackle some of the under underlying problems that led to them being uh, homeless in the first place. My Lords, with a health audit by Homeless Link showing that some four out of five people experiencing homelessness need support with their mental health, how will the government ensure that they do get the help that they need in areas that actually don't have the necessary specialist mental health services that are being funded through the long-term plan. And further to this, will the Noble Lord, the Minister, commit to a continued expansion of specialist homeless healthcare services throughout the NHS as part of a renewed rough sleeping strategy? Well, I, th I thank the Noble Baroness for those questions, and they are very important issues. Um, our plans to transform the NHS mental health services as part of the long-term plan uh, and with 2.3 billion additional funds in a year, we are investing by 23 to 24, and we think that will enable an extra 2 million people in England to access NHS-funded uh, mental health support by 23 to 24. But in terms of targeting much further down, we're hoping that some of, this, uh, some of the work we do through community mental health frameworks um, will, and give, will give 370,000 adults with serious mental illness greater control over their care and supporting them. Now, we have to look at this care in a sort of multifaceted way. So it's, you know, we're looking at psychological therapies, improved um, physical uh, health care, access to employment support, trauma-informed care, and support for those with self-harm and substance misuse problems. And we've also announced that the 30 million uh, that we announced to re-establish these uh, specialist mental health provisions, we want to learn from those to see what's the best way of rolling out more in the future. 
has the government carried out an analysis of why there's been a massive increase on the number of people who are rough sleeping in our streets? What does the analysis say and what's the government going to do about it? Well, indeed, on, 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 some, of the, uh, on, on some of the measures, um, we've seen um, uh, some of the measures actually, actually decrease. So rough sleeping has decreased in every region of England. Um, there were 2,440 people expected to be sleeping rough on a single night in autumn 2021, which was an eight-year low. We've also seen some of the problems uh, associated, such as suicides from uh, experience in homelessness, and others actually fall. But that's not a need to get complacent. That's why we want to roll out this programme. We've, we've exceeded the target of 20, and we'll continue rolling them out.